Hello and welcome to the Learning Pro Live. My name's Kath Ellis and today we've got a very special guest. We're going to talk about how you can go about finding uh, work during these times, COVID-19. I've got a very special guest. His name is John Hinchcliffe. Hello, John. How are you? I'm doing really good. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk today about tips for learning designers looking for work. Uh, we obviously uh, are in difficult times right now. Some of us are finding lots of work and then there's some, you know, some learning designers who are either wanting a change of scenery or they're just looking to to do some extra projects. So I thought we could maybe have a little chat and talk about, you know, some tips and tricks. And John, you know, you are another one that is so generous with your time, always sharing, always networking. Loads of people know you within the industry. But for those of, who don't know you, please introduce yourself, will you? Yeah, sure thing. And thanks once again for having me. I really love this initiative and really just helping people. So yeah, John Hinchliffe. Uh, I've been in learning and development for over 10 years now. So I started out in face-to-face uh, delivery for a bank and then started to evolve into digital learning, which I found out was something that I absolutely adored. So I started out instructional design, started with Articulate Storyline, really honing my craft on that. I then joined Virtual College here in the UK, which is a great online learning company, and really started to understand what it was to create mass you know, online learning. So I started instructional design, then became team leader, then became uh, instructional design manager. We won Learn Technologies Company of the Year, the LT Awards, two years out of the three years that I was there. I joined the board of directors for the eLearning Network, which is a fantastic organization that is really looking at helping individuals within the learning industry. And we had around 4,000 members and associates within that. So that was really about helping people. And then I won Learning Professional of the Year Bronze Award at the LPI Awards. And it kind of spurred me to then think, maybe I should go alone. So I became a freelancer. And I did that for, that was a year. And then I got poached to then move out to the United Arab Emirates and helped out the United Arab Emirates University. So helping their academia move from face-to-face -to, -face to blended to online, which was an incredible experience. So I've been out there for the past 18 months. Mm -hmm. uh, within that, I won Learning Professional of the Year Silver at the LPI Awards, still going for that gold. Mm -hmm. And within that also, I've been creating a few initiatives to help the industry. So I created something called Hashtag Want it Wednesday on LinkedIn, which was inspired by the Ice Bucket Challenge, whereby it was really about putting the onus on people to share information. We as an industry have an incredible wealth of information, but we just need something unique in order to be able to actually share that. So yeah. with One Tip Wednesday, it was you give a tip on a Wednesday and you nominate two people. And they then the next week give a tip, nominate two people. And that was just an idea I had in my living room one day. And it grew and grew and grew. And it's had over 100,000 views. We have had people such as Carl Kopp, the godfather of gamification. He's That's done right. one. Uh, David James, who has the Learning Development Podcast. He did one. Laurie Niles Hoffman. And it was just really beautiful to see people getting on board with that and really just sharing quirky but great tips. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'm now back in the UK. So at the beginning of August, I joined Jampan, which is a digital marketplace whereby we help clients so those can be small up to big multinational organizations find freelancing talent and really find people that are right for them that are right for their requirements at the right price and so i look after over a thousand freelancers ranging from instructional designers developers graphic designers all the way through to like community managers ux ui designers and really looking at how do I help them really upskill during these times, but also people that are new. And I think this is one of the great things yeah. of the chat today is if you have had the security of a full-time job and now all of a sudden you are thinking, maybe I go freelance, it's just letting you know what things to look out for, what things to be mindful yeah. of, 
but also to give you a helping hand to understand what's out there for inspiration. Because I think that's another thing is that if we work in a small organization, we've never been exposed to things such as quality assurance. Mm -hmm. Some organizations never do it. So you are constantly putting out work and just getting a lot of bad feedback and taking that as the norm. So mm -hmm. for me, it's like mentoring on a massive scale and it's really wonderful. Well, I, uh, we have got loads of people tuning in right now and are saying hello. Uh, we've got Tarek who's saying shine, John. <laughs> Um, we've got uh, 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 Hassam, who's saying regards uh, from the UAE. Uh, Dale saying, wow, that's incredible. Uh, we've got Razor. Hi, John. It's amazing. Um, I can't thank you enough for helping me. You should visit Dubai when it's all right. And Tarek saying that it's okay to focus more on classroom and virtual design or um, I should learn e-learning design. I will talk a little bit about that as well because – um, oh, I know that we've got more fans. Regards, I also live in Dubai for four years, so you know it, it's it's um, going back to the last question. You know, does Jampam, um, you know, do do they offer services for classroom based facilitation, or is it really uh, for remote um, work only? So the vast majority is remote that we've had. So remote digital services, but there is, you know, times whereby we have clients come through and say, we would like somebody who is partially remote, but we'd also like them to come into, you know, the office or the university, maybe like once, twice a week. And so then we have to look at the geographical kind of elements of those. So we have yeah. some clients that are fully digital focused, but we also have ones that also look at blended learning. So yeah. it's really about us, you know, it's really about me looking at our talent and really understanding. So rather than having a massive platform that is just numbers and names, it's really us understanding who are those people, what are their strengths, what are their backgrounds, but also what are their aspirations. And I think that's a massive thing for me is, how can we help people be the roles that they want to be in the future? Because yeah. it's almost as if COVID is a reset for us. And it, you know, I like to see things as an opportunity and really utilize this as how can we provide people with the resources to help them change from being, maybe they're an instructional designer developer, they want to be an experienced designer. What's that gap in between? But also from me at Jampan, it's, how can I put something in place that is robust, that is easily accessible? Because at the end of the day, also, I'm an instructional design developer at heart. So it's yeah. how can I provide those resources that would work, that, you know, really are true to the way that I think about learning. So, yeah, that's really it. Also, as a caveat to this Learning Pro Live, you might hear sounds, you might see people in the background. We're currently having the gutters cleaned. <coughs> So if for whatever reason somebody opens that door or there's a large amount of sound, that's the reason for it. It's all good. It's all good. That you may have dogs jumping through here. Uh, there may be dogs on your side as well. Right. Where's your dog? They're next to you? No, he, he keeps on walking in and out and just really curious and probably wants to put in a few of his own points. All oh, right. Okay. Well, Emma Pawson saying hello both. Yeah. And um, Asia um, is saying hello from the UAE. So, um, John, uh, so Jampan is something that I've been aware of for, for quite a long time. And um, I'd love for us to kind of be able to talk about how it works. So someone like myself, I'm a freelancer um, or anyone who's interested, in, you know, I'm just using myself as an example. I um, jump on the website and I log in and I create a profile and it takes me through some steps where I fill in some information about myself. Yep. What happens from there? So the big parts of the information are, so obviously name, contact details, also making sure that you are accepting of how we utilize your data because that is everything that we do in the world now. But yep. also it's 
us getting an understanding of what are your skills, what are your price mm -hmm. ranges associated to those, but also what is your portfolio? Because yeah. that is the massive differentiator between people, isn't it? It's really being able to prove and also really demonstrate that look and feel of the work that you do. And so within your profile, you're able to upload an infinite amount of project portfolio items to really demonstrate what are your skills and also be able to provide case studies relating to those so that when either it's myself, so I will have clients come through and say, we are looking for, let's say, five instructional uh, designers capable of creating an articulate storyline, maybe between this kind of price range. So I will go through our platform, I'll look for those particular individuals, and then it's really looking at what information have they put, how have they articulated that, but also what are their examples, how do they look? And it's another thing of if somebody is not quite at the level that the client wants from shortlisting, if there is feedback, then we're able to actually go back to the freelancer and actually provide some feedback and actually just really try and help because I think during the times that we're living in at the moment, there's a lot of people who are applying for jobs and unfortunately getting knocked back without feedback. And yep. so we don't know what people are looking for. We don't know expectations and it can be incredibly disheartening. So it's really about taking a personal approach. So, and that's a from service. You, you guys didn't do that before. No, this is, this is kind of a lot of new things that we've started bringing through. So, I mean, Jampan has been around for, I believe it's about six years now. And it's ever evolving, ever, ever evolving. And really over the past I believe, year, you know, it's really made some absolutely massive changes. And so one big thing that they really wanted was somebody to really focus on their talent. You know, yeah. and I was very fortunate enough that I have, I've utilized Jampan from all of its different functions. So I have been a customer hiring Jampan freelancers. I have been a freelancer through Jampan, but now I've kind of done the full triangle and I'm within Jampan. And it's really about looking at how do we really provide that personal service? Because, yeah. you know, people, people are people. And it's really about us helping them, understanding them. But also at the same time, a massive thing for me is providing exposure to people of things that they might not be aware of. So whether that is particular types of software. So doing that in a safe environment whereby people can maybe learn about, adapt, maybe evolve, elucidate, things that they might not have thought of beforehand, but just letting them taste. But then also yep. I'm talking to a lot of industry experts in order to provide talks, for our people so and a massive thing of that is we're doing that for free for our freelancers because yep. i'm i'm very much of that thing of i want to provide as much value as possible without people having to dip into their pocket yeah so you know that was once it wednesday that has been the current L D global zoom meetups you know that is a really great initiative that is going on and it's really about, you know, just providing those resources for free to help people, to help them grow. Yeah, well, I think that's great um, because I know that I've previously been on Jampam and it's just been no, you know, there's been no communication at all. It's just like I'm, um, I'm I, I, you know, I've been signed up, but there's just absolutely nothing going on. So I think the fact that uh, there is some communication, there's someone dedicated now to help people um, is wonderful. I think it's absolutely great. And for you guys tuning in, if you've got any questions for John, you've got the man now. So uh, feel, feel free to ask all the questions that you like. Um, and so as a user, it's not costing me anything. There's no fee. Um, it, it's a, it's a fee from the other side, isn't it? From the client, they, they, um, yeah, so and that's the project that they want. So uh, what I'm trying to say is it's not something that, um, a freelancer or, or anyone who's interested in joining Jampan, there's no cost. Yeah. So there's no kind of uh, monthly fee or anything like that. So the only time that Jampan takes a, you know, an administrative cut is once a project's actually done. Yep. 
So, and that's fully arranged. And thankfully, you know, it's fully transparent in the uh, T's and C's, which is one of the nice things. There's nothing kind of sneaky. So, which is really lovely. And it's, um, yeah, it's also us trying to add a lot of value to that experience as well. You know, being able to be there, being really within the business and just trying to help people as much as possible and being that dedicated person for communication. So people can email through if they signed up and they want help on their bio. They want to know where to get inspiration. I mean, one of the big things and, you know, obviously there's no backhand money in this, but I keep on pointing them through to your website, Kath, for inspiration, because oh. I think, you know, when people really want to look at the levels that they should really be aspiring to and just inspiration, you know, I think for yourself, I think people like uh, Tim Slade, Devin Peck, you know, really beautiful, concise portfolios to really inspire and really engage a learner because, yep. you know, it's, it's how do we make ourselves stand out at this time and it's you know what's eye-catching but also i think you know a big thing is how are you also utilizing your social networks in order to actually make people aware of the cool things that you can do so yeah. not just relying on you know let's say for example if you're looking for a full-time position so not just relying on sending out your cv cvs are very tricky I mean, I've I've been a hiring manager previously and I've had CVs that are 20 pages long just with mm -hmm. all the different courses that people have been on. And unfortunately, it doesn't really tell a story. And we're utilizing LinkedIn more and more for the hiring process. So really being able to talk about what are the cool things that you have created. Also, what are you learning at the moment? You know, if you haven't utilized LinkedIn Learning's free trial yet, really Do utilize it. it. You know, and I think especially at the moment, it's if you are looking for work and you're looking to evolve yourself, the wonderful thing is that there is, you know, resources available online, you know, YouTube, LinkedIn Learning, Udemy, those kinds of areas whereby you can really think, okay, so maybe I want to explore into a particular area, maybe data driven learning. Cool. Go on LinkedIn Learning, check out uh, Lauren Niles Hoffman's course on data-driven learning. Maybe you want to learn about some psychology. Look at Stella Collins' course on there. So, you know, you can really start to enhance, you know, the strings in oh, your bow. Yeah. And one of the um, – so I, I've gone through the process. One of the nice things that I was thinking about when I was going through it, it's asked me, what what are your preferences, you know, what what – tools do you use so you know I put adapt and evolve and all these different tools and then it asked me for my portfolio pieces and I thought well this is nice it's actually asking you to upload it within so it's not requiring someone to have an external portfolio like mine you know if someone doesn't have it but they have the portfolio pieces they can upload it within so I thought that was really nice and um, yeah the user interface and everything looks really nice and user friendly um, so obviously we've got a place for people to showcase pieces. You got any tips for, um, the kind of pieces that people, um, should be submitting? I think, well, so massive one for me is length. So I usually look at something between five to 10 minutes as an example. So really short, really sharp, really showing, how does something look? How does something feel? You know, make sure it actually works properly. That is a crucial one. Yeah. And I sometimes look at, you know, when people are coming through this and they need inspiring. So a massive thing for me was actually the show, which you and Kim put through, you know, really looking at that as inspiration. So taking briefs from that and thinking up, you know, what are particular areas that you want to create as a solution? Yeah, but also one that I think is a really kind of key area is look at what are mandatory trainings and how can you put your own spin on that. So whether it is health and safety, whether it's data protection, mm -hmm. such things as those, and just how can you make that an engaging process? Think about how you would want to integrate that into an organization. Maybe you're looking at resources, not courses within that. Yeah, and really, look, and maybe that could become your case study. 
you know, rather than saying, here is an example of a piece of work, maybe given a story around this. So yep. this particular piece of, you know, content would be able to be accessed by somebody who needs, you know, help protecting themselves on single sign on, you know, yep. keeps on making mistakes, just being able to have, you know, just that little bit of a story to something. So that's also do something that you're interested in. Yeah, yeah. maybe give a bit of personality. Maybe, yeah, maybe you are really into video games. Maybe you are really into CrossFit. What is a short resource that, you know, really lets you show what you're interested about, but then that you can also passionate about? Because then that will show your writing ability. Yep. So Absolutely. It's just, it's just being able to provide, you know, those different levels of information and just a little bit of something about you. Mm. And don't submit something that you're really not interested in doing. You know, if you submit the type of work, um, for example, I couldn't think of anything worse than, you know, tech training, you know, screen capturing and that kind of stuff. So, you know, if that's not your bag, don't submit that. If you, like, can't stand a, an authoring tool, don't put something up because then, you know, so – Going from there, we've got a lot of questions here. So let me just see. Um, Emma saying, do Jampam work with UK freelancers only? That's a good question. We are global. We are, yep. we are everywhere. And so. she also says, uh, how do Jampam set, set themselves apart from sites like Upwork? So... I mean, it's a great question, and it's one that we do actually get quite often. Really, we focus on quality of freelancers. We're not into kind of the lowest price for someone. Yep. We're really focused on who are the best talent for that particular project, but also how can we help that talent? So, you know, you're really coming through and being a part of Jampan. That's the massive thing with it. So... Us taking that personal approach, getting to know you, what are the particular clients that you want to work with? Is it that you only work with corporate clients? Perfect. Okay, we can take that on board and we can utilize that when we have a corporate client. But it's really us taking that person first approach. I think, you know, one of the great things I was chatting with uh, David the other day, who's uh, our CEO, founder, you know, kind of spearhead. And he said, it's always people first. Mm. It's the talent, you know. That's why they have a talent manager because yep. it's really about us understanding, getting you the best price for your work. That's a massive focus of us at the moment is making sure that you get the right price for the work and that it's right for you as well. So, yeah, so that's really, yep. for me, that's, that's a differentiator. So leading on from what Emma said about Upwork, uh, if you think about it, if I go into Upwork and I'm looking for an SEO person, for example, or I, I want something done, um, I can go in and I can see the profiles of the candidates. Is that what the clients can see on their side? Do they Are they the ones that make the choice or do they come through you, John, to – make suggestions on who might be a good person for a specific job? So we have both functions on our platform. Mm -hmm. So we have whereby a supplier can, well, sorry, a client can go through and search our suppliers. And so they yep. are provided with their actual skills, their rates, biographies, portfolios, those kinds of elements. But in absolute truth, the vast, vast majority come through and they have a talk to us because mm. we really want that relationship with our clients in order to say, what are you really looking for? So actually taking a holistic approach to understand what are your actual needs? So maybe you think that you need an instructional designer at the moment, but actually you need a script writer. Yep. So it's us providing that resource to really understand what are your needs? How can we help? Who would be suitable? I'm really taking that approach. That's a great, that's fantastic. And even more important now, understanding that is your role and how people can leverage off you. If they are stuck with things like, you know, could you check my biography or can you review some of my portfolio pieces and maybe give me some feedback on that? 
then that's what makes your position, you know, even more exciting. Um, Heather uh, has said, so now, would it be best for me to use the contact form on the website as I know how busy you are? Yes, I would also use the uh, contact. So Heather, thank you very much for getting contact. So Heather actually sent through a uh, file that made our file submission limit go a little bit bonkers. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually coming through with a fix at the moment. So Heather, thank you very much for getting contact. Uh, yeah, always come through the contact. So we have the team actually looks at the contact box and is then able to do a triage service from there. Yeah, she also says, um, are there any standard daily rates for certain services? Uh, it really depends on experience, quality, those kinds of areas. So it's very difficult to say an instructional designer is this price. So it's really yeah. ours looking at the quality and really looking at experience, but also just having very honest conversations about, you know, if you are brand new into a particular area, what are you bringing? What might the prices be associated to those? Yeah, it's like any job, anything that comes you know, uh, in my inbox, everything's different. No, no specific price is the same. Um, we had a LinkedIn user who said, could you tell me the names of the teachers to look for on LinkedIn Learning? What we'll do is I'll get those names and I'll put them in the footnotes so that you guys can go. We'll even put the links up so um, you, you, have, you can go and check those out. Um, Asia says, um, are there any free... Um, tools i think that we can use for icebreakers gamification that we can use in our training uh yeah. so yeah i mean we could go um i mean there's kahoot yep kahoot's a really nice uh easy gamified tool so you can provide quizzes i think also you know if you're it depends on your actual crowd that you're utilizing. So you could use things such as Mentimeter and Slido. So you can actually provide uh, graphs that are live and that they are altering there and then. So you'd be able to show graphics and also people can submit words. So you might say, depending on your subject matter, it could be, you know, what is your biggest challenge within your role? And rather than people who might be a bit introvert, you know, people be able to just be on their device and it comes up and it starts, you know, populating those. So there's potentials with those. Um, yeah. I Do you have say on, on Jampam that uh, provide any kind of uh, blogs about topics like this? You know, is there any, um, I, I know that already uh, I have checked the Jampam website and there is even topics such as the ones that we're talking about right now. Uh, but do you, do, you, do you have any additional resources or are you affiliated with any um, specific businesses and tools? Um, so tools in terms of uh, learning management systems, yes. However, one thing that is a big push for me is these resources. You yeah. Know, being able to provide people with aware, you know, being aware of what's available. One of the biggest kind of resources that I would look at is Tracy Parrish's Zeef site. So mm -hmm. this will be another link that will bob in the footnotes. But um, Tracy Parrish has curated an incredible wealth of resources that are, I believe, they're all free, which is one of the yep. beautiful things of it. But it's kind of things like uh, gamification tools, icebreakers, authoring tools, um, like resources for editing your graphics, for your audio. So it's this massive long list. And, um, yeah, I oh, really, really like it. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Jane's just saying, oh, the show was fantastic. Oh, thanks, it Jane. Was. It really was. And uh, Fakar, who says, uh, uh, hey, hey, Kath, great topic. Oh, well, glad you're ha ha happy with that. And if you've got any questions for John, just just shoot them to us. Um, so, so that's really interesting that they can go down different um, – uh, you know, they can do two different things. They can either get suggestions from you – and um, they can they can actually go and search. So if someone's looking for someone like me who uses Adapt or Evolve, a specific authoring tool yeah. um, or a specific skill, they can do a search um, yeah. and, and filter it down. And then what generally happens, um, 
so a client puts a job up or do any jobs just get hired without going onto the system so is um, it's been a while since i've been on jam pam so i'm just uh just kind of picking your brain on on so we can kind of tell the story for those that haven't experienced it before yeah sure thing so what will happen is let's take for example a client will come through to us and maybe they are a multinational organization and they will say yep. look we are wanting to create 100 courses we just need 100 courses building so we'll actually have that conversation initially with the client to understand what are their needs potentially what authoring tool are they looking into whether there's any technical specifications that we have to take into consideration and then what we will do is we will go through our platform and we will look at what are we wanting to create so let's say for example we wanted to create 100 courses in elucidat you know elucidat yeah. was going to be what they really wanted okay great so we will then go through our platform and we will look for who are those that have an elucidat skill associated to them perfect yeah. we will collect you know the right amount that we need we will get in contact with them for availability however one of the great things now is we've now implemented an availability tool which is something that i will actually be shimming out in a massive email campaign today in order to allow people to understand that they can show when they're available so instead of you know let's say for example you were one of those people that was going to be on that list i'd call you up yeah because I, I like calling people i like having that kind of conversation or a zoom and just saying Kath, you know i've got this this is what they're looking you know your portfolio is fantastic are you available for this amount of time and then you say no because i'm amazing i've got so many pieces of work and i'm not available right that is time then that is yeah you know, unutilized so the availability tool is there for people to really show when are they available so that we can really look yeah. at who's available who's right for this so then we get in contact with them we provide them with what the brief is we collate that team together and then we have a client's team who actually bring those two together. So start having the you know, statement of words taken care of, start having the kickoff meetings scheduled, and also have regular catch-ups with everybody just to make sure that everything is working okay. Any feedback from both parties, you know, that yep. needs to be taken into consideration whilst things are being created and really moving things smoothly with that. So, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's really trying to just help everybody. So client and supplier. So I remember the last time I used Jampan, um, there was a function that you could search through jobs that people were looking for, for um, IDs and, uh, and, and, and different staff. Do they have that as well? Uh, we've, I think we removed that. I think it was maybe like a year and a half, maybe something okay. along those lines. But it's just because we started getting so much feedback from clients, you know, that really wanted to have the conversation, really wanted to have that personal service of understanding what they needed, you know, and that's, I think that's really the differentiator is, you know, listening to suppliers, listening to clients. And that's another thing, you know, like we're saying, you know, thankfully Heather has been on this and Heather is a supplier, you know, we've had a chit chat, we've had a Zoom and, you know, we are listening to what people are saying. We are making changes when things need changing. And it's really about having that flexibility and just being agile during these times. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's, and, you know, like we said, with resources, resources is a massive thing for me now to really look at what are we providing that's right, that's relevant, but also how can I provide resources that are easy for you as an individual to access that are right for you? And um, yeah. we've got a few, yeah, there's a, there's a few things in the pipeline that I can't say, yeah. but I will oh. say that they're, pre they're pretty oh, awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm just. If you want to know all the secrets of Jam Pam, please leave comments below. Um, we'll put a bit of pressure on him and we'll, we'll work out exactly what their game plan is. Um, so understanding that john um seeing that it's uh, heather says thank you <laughs> um so understanding that you know it's really important that people present themselves in their in their po profile 
They think a lot about um, the way that they put their profile picture, their bio that they write up, and the examples that they put up, and also the categories that they're choosing. They're very careful about that. So if they are someone who is an instructional designer and they don't do development, you know, to maybe focus more on those tasks rather than authoring tools because that might send mixed messages. So really, um, what do you think, John? Yeah, I think it is that thing of put down the elements that you're comfortable doing because, you know, we are people, you know, we have feelings. And if you put yourself forward as, you know, I am great at, oh, let's think of something that I'm bad. Okay, I can openly admit that I'm bad at Captivate. Yeah, I'm, me too. I'm really, I'm really bad. Everything else I'm, you know, I'm pretty funky dory with, but Captivate, I just, I'm not good. So if I put myself forward as Captivate, because I'm trying to cover all the bases, and then all of a sudden, you know, John from Japan gets in touch and says, hi, um, you know, I've got a client. They really like, you know, what you say. They like your LinkedIn stuff. Um, you know, could you please help with a massive piece of Captivate work? Problems are going to happen. Yeah. So it's, it's about having that honesty. But I think also in the background, it's also during this time thinking about what do you want to develop into? Yeah. yeah I think you know the fact is that covid has changed everything you know it's, it's so changed an id who's interested in doing more ux kind of work um how would they go about that is that expressing that in their bio is that reaching out to you independently is that maybe putting up examples of work that they've done and they don't communicate with you and then when they're giving a task if they're if they're aspiring to do something but they're not quite at that level um mm. is that quite dangerous as far as uh, someone saying well yeah I, I, I do ux and then it, they get given a job and they can't do it how does that work do you just do the whole conversation the brief you know when you're having a chat with them do you find that out how, do, how does that work? Yeah, so it's very much, you know, bringing it back to that personal service. It's, you know, people being able to come into contact and say, look, I am an aspiring X. Yeah. Do you have suggestions of where I can look? And what I can do also is we have on our administration side, just make notes of what is taking place at the moment. Yeah. So just so we can really track on progress and really understand, you know, in the future, if somebody is looking for, let's say, a junior of something, yep. then potentially that is, you know, a nice gateway for somebody to then expand their skills. So, that yeah, it's be. about taking that personal service and, um, you know, really, yeah, really getting to know the people. That's, that's yep. the key thing. And it's also, you know, if we have big lots of data of people saying, look, I'm really curious in X, and maybe yeah. let's say we have, 30, 40 people saying that, then that's the thing for me to say, okay, what resources do I need to provide the masses in order to help those? Rather than it being person by person, thinking how can we do that? I mean, goodness, we could become, you know, an academy at some point, you know, in order to help people in the future. Yeah. Because the sky's the limit really with what what you do. Um, Emmanuel, because um, I'm going to talk about the website in a second. Emmanuel just asked, what's the URL? So it's uh, jam, J-A-M dash pan dot co dot UK. Jam hyphen pan dot com. Okay. So what's really interesting, Emmanuel, and why I'm transitioning is um, John just mentioned about looking in the future and on the front of their website in fact I'm going to bring it up and share it so you guys can see I'm just going to open another screen here we go all right and I'll just remove some of these 
things on the screen. So this is uh, the Jampan uh, website. And um, let me just remove some of this stuff so it looks a little bit nicer. All right, so we've got a, here we go, a little bit more room. So nice, nice user experience. One of the things that I loved was some of your stats in which you're talking about what's going on in the landscape right now. And I really found it very interesting. Um, it had some statistics on what, what people are looking for right now. Um, yeah. So uh, there was something like, uh, yeah, 325% rise in project management, in project managers, 50% increase in learning experience designers, 375% um, higher requests for community managers. So it's really showing how COVID is changing things, you know, and how you guys are tracking this. And I found this fascinating. And there was one that was, oh, here. So there's a, and this is this is really fascinating, John. 40% decrease in instructional designers and 90% decrease in animators, 62% decrease in e-learning developers. But the demand for Evolve and Elucid, Elucid at developers has increased by 50% and 45%. Yeah, which is yeah. incredible. I mean, this is, and it's something that I'm so thankful about being with Jampan is having this exposure and this insight into what is, you know, the industry really talking about, you know, and also what is this demand? I mean, you know, the crazy things when we look at that is, you know, obviously learning experience designers, organizations really wanting that rounded learning, you know, individual to really look at content curation, not just think about one off learning, you know, resources, but also that experience for people. But then also, I mean, this is a really great article. And also I have to give a shout out to uh, Ashley Sinclair, who is our marketing individual. She just makes things look absolutely fantastic. And it's really about, you know, how is the market shifting and also areas that they're shifting into. I mean, there's something within here that is talking about how organizations are looking at the future. And it's how areas such as VR, AI, chatbots, you know, organizations are actually investing in researchers. Yeah. So rather than thinking about an instructional design developer, it's they're actually getting researchers in who they can say to them, right, we are thinking we need a chatbot for our learners. What does that mean? Write us a piece, give us a presentation so that we can really comprehend what does that mean for us and how might we need to really develop in the future? So, it's yeah, really, I mean, an area that, you know, we wouldn't really think about, but also, you know, COVID, the statistics from this, we're really looking at the differences between Q1 and Q2 this year. So it's really us understanding that organizations as well, obviously, when it comes to new hires, there's going to be a reduction, but organizations also understanding, look, we have an LMS, we have an LXP. How do we actually utilize that to its full capacity? So it's kind yep. of like Excel. Excel, we maybe use 10, 20% of what Excel can really do, but there's yep. absolutely work that you can do. So with learning experience platforms, how can you really utilize that within your organization? How can you get the full functionality of that but also, you know, how can you engage with your learners? So, I mean, things such as community managers. That was a massive mm. spike. That was an increase of 375% on the demand of that. So it's really organizations understanding, look, we have massive corporations of individuals. And they're just thinking, look, we've got communities. How do we build these? How do we have best practice sharing? How do we provide resources at the point of need during that time then so, this told me a massive well it, it it kind of told a story when i went through it and i was like well this tells me that people are less they're they're wanting um fewer people who can just treat content rather than build experiences 
and that includes you know when you're talking about learning experience platforms people who can maintain these i mean uh you know, we've, we've got uh we've got a comment here um from the the moody mode mode uh wow. liking the excel analogy uh, there's only a fraction of utilization well said yeah i mean the the thing is when we've got an lms that is so limited you know and then we've got learning experience platforms that are basically kind of a uh, you know uh, they they're offering so many things they're not 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 only offering the traditional um e-learning but they're also offering really um you know that community behind it so that's fascinating as well i'd love to see statistics on how many you know what what your you know what your stats are on you know the demand for learning management system administrators in regards to that community side as well you know um yeah. and you know that's the thing is you know the data data is massive for me at the moment and really breaking down you know all the different indicators that we're seeing you know where are we seeing the biggest indicators for you know lms admins but also specific lms admins so are we seeing mm -hmm. particular right for particular ones but also where are we seeing you know requests for things that are outside of the norm so like uh copywriters copywriters yeah. within learning i mean i've worked in a few l d organizations and we've never really talked about copywriters but we're starting to see an increase in the demand for those so whereby people can take content write it beautifully make a you know an intelligent story from that yeah and it's just incredibly interesting and but it's also looking at how are people utilizing integrations and people that can create an ecosystem now so looking at integrations and also looking at the technology that organizations have at the moment so things such as ms teams ms yeah. teams once again is you know very underutilized i feel because you know you can utilize ms team streams for user generated content that can be utilized in their channels but also you can utilize things such as filtered so filtered is a really cool ai driven uh content curation tool yep they've got this tool called magpie and you can actually use magpie as a trial for free to really experience it but they've got a plugin to come into your ms team so that you can provide people with the information where they are and that's really you know it's really thinking about how can we get information to people where they are how they're working at this moment in time yep. and i think you know during these times that we're looking at more and more people are remote you know that is either by organization but also by choice you yeah. know there's now a large amount of people that are thinking why do i need to go into an office in order to actually you know work i've been doing yeah. it for three months from home and that's very much resonated in terms of job openings as well so previously you might not have thought oh, I'll go looking on the US job boards for positions when I live in the UK. Mm. Now with so many offering. It certainly is for our industry, isn't it? And I don't foresee things changing in the near future. You know, so I think offerings like this, I was really excited to have you come on, John, because not only do I love you dearly and you're like a brother to me, I call you my brother, but... Um, yeah. I think it's really an exciting role that you're taking on and I wanted to at least have a chat and let give people the opportunity to to have you there and ask as many questions and guys you know um if you've got questions for John still please let us know if there's something that we're, we're missing um but I wanted to try and go through the experience um of working with Jampan so people could visualize how it would be and you know I'm presuming as well that if people start working with Jampan on a regular basis, they start getting a good reputation and work will come, you know, obviously it's like working with a freelancer on land, you know, I'm saying on land, 
uh, you know, uh, in a different environment, you know, without going through an agency, um, you'll go back to that freelancer because you know that they're good and, you know, you've had that experience. So um, I'd say, you know, if, if you guys are wanting a change of scenery or if you're thinking about just giving it a, a, a look at, just, just, just jump on, apply. It's not, there's no harm. It's not going to cost you anything. And um, you can see what, what's available. Mark has said, do clients seem open to talent outside of their country of origin or are clients wanting local talent? And that's a good question. It is a good question. And in truth, that depends on the client. So we have a lot of clients that are open to who is the best person to help with our needs. You know, obviously, yeah. taking into consideration uh, time differences and just working together on those. Some are very specific on uh, for security reasons that they need somebody within a particular country. So um, US clients, some are specific that we need people in the US, just part of their terms and conditions. So very much it comes from client to client. But, you know, a lot of the hard work of having those discussions is taken care of by our team with the clients at the beginning. So do they have any specifications? Are there anything that needs to be taken into consideration for security? You know, also whereby we have uh, clients who have particular technology that they need the freelancer to utilize is then looking at what are the logistics with those. So, yeah, I mean, it really, really does depend from clients to clients. And I was just looking on your website. I know you have named um, different businesses that, that Jampam um, uh, have worked with just so people can understand. So, you know, Sodexo, Royal Mail, Google, Santander, um, Deloitte, Virgin. So, you know, these guys are working with major organizations as well. So uh, it gives you a little bit of confidence that, you know, they've got some clout behind them. And um, like David's been around for ages. Like, How big is Jampan there? How many employees well, this is this is the beautiful thing about it. So we are a core team of seven, but we utilize a lot of freelancers. So it's oh, really yeah. we we do what you know is our organization. So you know, as opposed to thinking right, we need a massive full time team, we actually look at what is our core business and say right, okay, when we need marketing, fantastic, we have got a fantastic. Uh, marketing freelancer uh, so it's mass marketing which is Ashley Sinclair and so we utilize her when we need her so rather than having a full-time marketing person we've got that utilization so it's really it's you know it's really doing what we're saying it's it's mm -hmm. a really really clever model and you know David has been you know he's been in the learning industry for a whole heap of time and Jampan came out I think it was six years ago when he really put focus in that and it's just ever evolving you know and this yeah. is you know I'm bringing in a very big wave of change just yeah. because they've now got the ability to focus time on the talent and I have a lot of weird and wonderful ideas of what I really want to do to help people and that's that's the absolute massive thing I can imagine them. they were probably like whoa 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 stop <laughs> yeah. You're on page 16 of 3,000 on your presentation, John. Stop, okay? But, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I don't take any more. My heads are like... <laughs> um, I mean, I have to give them an incredible amount of respect and love for how they've treated uh, this whole experience so far and just their willingness. And also, from their side, the things that they want to do is yeah. you know it really drives me forward so um yeah very very pleased very thankful uh that i'm in this position at the moment and um yeah just it's just how can i help as many people as possible really yeah well i think guys you know this has been this has been fascinating certainly for me i hope that you guys have got a lot from this we've got some great tips on um you know we haven't gone too too into too much detail i mean you're all adults you you do this all the time so it's really just thinking about how you present yourself john is phenomenal so if you've got any questions his details are going to be in the footnotes of um, this video so reach out to him ask him questions so i've put your linkedin profile john 
and also your website. I'll also add Jampam. I will put all the resources from this session that we've we've talked about in um in a document so you can open it up and go and look at more re resources and, and stuff. Uh, but in the John, you know, I've had you for nearly an hour. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to spend with with me. It's been brilliant and really um you know it's been great to see that Jampan have have moved to a model that is incredibly personal. And I think um, certainly I'll be excited to see some of the changes you're going to implement. And I think you're going to do an absolute amazing job, mate. So uh, thank you very much for your time, sir. Hey, and thank you so much for having me. And also, I can't actually see how many people are on this viewing, but thank you all for uh, joining us for 56 minutes that has flown by. <laughs> Jennifer says, I was late to join. But uh, what I saw totally grabbed my interest. And she said, thank you both. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I, we, we appreciate that. And um, yeah, guys, I, I will be signing off. I'm going to do a session tomorrow, um, my second session on portfolio. So that's going to be a good one. So make sure you, uh, you tune in. And uh, I've got some other um, fantastic people lined up to, to, to bring on to interview. Not as good as John, though. You know, John's you know he's the boy he's my man so um but uh thank you john and I'm, I'm sure i'll have you on again sometime soon uh talking about another topic because i know that we've got a lot of passion yeah all right well, passion for learning not just passion oh <laughs> mate i got passion for one another. <laughs> oh too funny all right guys we've gone a bit crazy so we'll sign off here uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.